highest of highs to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. Oh, from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 1030 service here at the Midwest Church of Christ. And once again, I want to say thank you, everybody, for being here. Because I know with the virus, a lot of folk aren't coming out. So we applaud you for being here to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we want you to maintain a safe distance. Uh, where you see a, a flyer is where you should sit. So if there's a flyer behind you, that's where you should be sitting so that we can make sure that we have our social distancing in, in order. Amen? Amen? All right. We want to keep everybody safe so we can keep coming back. All right. This is a call to worship, the time that we should fix our, fix our minds on why we are here, the purpose that we are here, and that is to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I say, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt you, exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Amen. Let us stand right now as we get a verse of a song. Let us all stand. God has smiled on me, and he has set me free. God has smiled on me. Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. You know that God has smiled on me and he has set me free. God Oh, y'all didn't say that now. Has he been good to you? All right, come on now. If this was a basketball game, y'all be yelling. Amen. Now, this is the Lord we're trying to praise this morning. So come on, let's raise our voices so he can, he can hear the cheer. He can hear the, the love in our hearts. Was there... for a special prayer this morning. Anyone else? Well, I just want to say one thing, and that is to let us all keep Brother Burns and his family in our prayers, as, you know, and from the loss of his wife, uh, and she was funeralized on yesterday, and uh, we just want to keep them in prayer during this time of bereavement. Amen? Amen. All right, and we have here uh, Sister Cynthia, is it Purvis? Yeah, Purvis, uh, right. I, I know Cynthia, why did I say that? Uh, it says, prayer for the family of Brother Ralph Palmer, who passed away. Prayer for the, the uh, family of Brother Ralph Palmer, who passed away. Amen. Amen. Well, let Sister Anna get in here. Um, then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Come on, Sister. There you go. All right. Get you in here so you can get down and praise with us. All right. go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Oh, wise and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your grace. We thank you for allowing us to be in your worship one more time. Oh, Father, we, we exalt you and we ask that you fill this place with your Holy Spirit, that you would touch every heart and every mind as we go into the worship hour. Father, anoint the man of God who will bring your word this morning, that it may go forth, at touching the lives of all who hear it, changing our hearts to be a little bit more Christ-like, to let us walk out of this place renewed, refreshed, and revived, that we might go into this sin-sick world and tell somebody that there is a Savior, 
There is somebody who can heal all your needs. He can heal all your hurts because earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And Lord, we ask you to be in our community as we have seen the murder rate rise and the, the violence rise and the, the uh, immorality rise. Father, help us to, to stand boldly proclaiming your gospel and not faint and not grow weary in our well-doing. Lord, once again, we ask you to fill this place in our hearts so that we might truly worship you in spirit and in truth. And it is the mighty name of Jesus that we always pray. Let the church say amen. Let us continue our song of praises with number nine in the song of praise book. There's still God has smiled on you. We'll do verse two. God has smiled on me and he has set me free. And God has smiled on me and he's been good to me. Amazing grace. Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You know that God has smiled on me, and he has set me free. And God has smile on me and he's been good to me when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we'll no less day to sing god praise than when we first begun you know that god has smile on me and he has set me free and God has smile on me and he's been good to me amen amen still in the song of praise book number 38 let us go let us go to number 38 I keep falling in love with him Uh, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as years go by. And oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again it gets sweeter and sweeter as the years go by and oh what a love between the church and i i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again i keep Falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It grows sweeter and sweeter as the years go by. And oh, what a love between my Bible and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. In our sacred selection book, let us go to number 1A. Number 1A. 
How great thou art. How great thou art. Number 1A. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds the hand have made, and I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe display. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art, and how great thou art. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art, and how great thou art. When through the wood, the forest glades I wander, and hear the bird sing sweetly in the tree. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, and then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee, and how great thou art. And how great thou art. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art. And how great thou art. And when I think. That God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take my sin. Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art, and how great thou art. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art, and how Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? And then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim. My God, how great thou art. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art. And how great thou art. And then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. And how great thou art, how great thou art. May we stand, may we stand for scripture and prayer.
Good morning, church. Let us notice 2 Timothy chapter 4, 9 through 11. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 9 through 11. For the Bible, the word of God says, Do thyself, do thy diligence, come shortly unto me. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, uh, Grecians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmetia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. O oh Lord, how wonderful is thy name. As we come before your throne of mercy today, thanking you, O oh God, for allowing us to see this day. For we know that all things work together for good for them that love you, but we come in the most humblest way that we know how, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, as we come before you, you today, come before you with situations on our heart because every day there's bad news. But we know, O oh Lord, that today is the day that we come before you to thank you for all what you have done. We just ask you, O oh Lord, to be with the speaker of the hour who come before us and break unto us the bread of life, things that are wanting that each and every one of us should know that the cross uh, is before us, O oh Lord, that each and every day they would look to you to give us the strength that we need. Lord, we'll ask you to be with those who are mourning the, the loved ones, continue to bless Brother Burns and his family, Sister Knight and her family, Sister Vivian, Gwen, be with them, O oh Lord. And we ask you, O oh Lord, as we come before you today, ask special blessings on our minister, Brother Jerry, who's still home recuperating, that you will give him strength each and every day. But Lord, as we approach your throne to mercy today, that things will be done decently and in order, and there is anyone in our audience today who don't know you in a part of sin, give them an opportunity, O oh Lord, to, to respond to your word. For these are prayers that come last in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. amen. As we prepare for the Lord's table, let us turn to 310. 310. Get sent me. On a hillside so lonely, near Jesus one day, so wounded and weary, he went there to pray. By friends there forsaken, so lonely he feel. To heavens he's crying in helpless appeal. But a golden day has broken in old Gethsemane. The mornings all come singing the songs of victory. There's a new highway to glory, the road that Jesus trod. With a halo we'll travel in the pathway to God. The hymnologist penned, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus, you will remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. You will remember not to forget to assemble ourselves together. That is a commandment that he left us with. This is not any old day. This is a day that God calls his children to commune with him. And we find in the book of the 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. 
When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. This new covenant that Paul penned can be found in the book of life in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the 31st verse. And it reads, Behold, the days are coming, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of bondage, though I was a husband to them. But this is a new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will put my law in their mind. I will write it in their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer shall each man teach his brother, each man his neighbor, for know ye the Lord. For they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will forgive them of their iniquities and their sins I remember no more. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do so until the Lord's death until he returns. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup unworthy is guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthy eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you. For if we would judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, so that we will not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, wait, tarry for one another. But if any man is hungry, let him eat at home, at least you come together for judgment. And the rest, he says, I will set in order when I return. Let us bow. Gracious Father, Lord, we are thankful for this day. We're thankful because it's a special day. It's a special day, Lord, because we can commune with you, O oh Lord. We can give our cares to you because we know that you love us. And Lord, we ask that you bless this bread which represents your bruised body. And we ask that you bless the fruit of the vine which represents your blood that you shed on Calvary. But Lord, we first, we lift up our sins to you asking, O oh Lord, that you will forgive us in both thoughts and in deeds, the things we do normally and unnormally. Bless each and every family who's represented here today, Lord. And bless each and every listener, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, we know that there's no place like this place near this place. We know that we're in the right place this morning. And we know, O oh Heavenly Father, that the brother will bring forth the word that will change our lives, Lord, so that we can leave better than what we came. Lord, we love you and we thank you, O oh Lord. And we thank you for the first day of the week, O oh Lord, because we can come together with you. These things we ask in your son Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen. Have we overlooked anyone for communion? Let us mark our hymn book to number 640 as the song of invitation. And let us turn to number 345 as Brother John Malone comes and delivers the message that's on his heart for this morning. Number 345, when the roll is called up yonder. Number 345. 
When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saber earth should gather up on the other show And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and glorious morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall get to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Uh, let us labor for the master from the dun till set in sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is caught yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the Everybody looking forward to that day when the roll is called up yonder when he calls your name and you can hear your name in peace you don't hear it with an attitude but you hear it in peace and he says come on in my good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things I want to make you ruler over many I don't know about y'all I can't wait for that day and so y'all can wait to shout then I'm gonna shout now like I'm already there because I can't wait for that day Good to see everybody this morning um, here at the Midwest Church of Christ. We're thankful for you uh, coming this morning. We're going to be in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, you can be turning there. But we're thankful for all those in attendance. We have a good number here in person. And it's starting to look back like normal. So make sure y'all stay separated. Amen. Don't touch nobody. <laughs> Be like him, I can't touch this. So. But we appreciate all, all y'all being here with us on this morning and those that are watching virtually. We're appreciative of you watching in your home. We're thankful for those mediums um, that God has, set, uh, has ordained for us to be able to use. Um, we're thankful for our visitors. I see many visitors here in faces that I don't recognize. We're thankful you could have been anywhere else this morning, but you are honored. Yes, I have one visit. She said, I'm coming back tomorrow. And I, she came back and saw me, and I'm so thankful um, for her and all those that are here. Um, I meant to call him out last week and embarrass him, but it's good to have Jordan Lee back here, um, back in Louisville. Um, he, he's back from, somebody gave him a round of applause. They're so happy to see him. <laughs> and he actually has, has a friend of his with him here all the way from New York. Yeah, I have the pulpit so I can embarrass y'all this morning. Um, but it's good to have, um, have her here and everyone that's here visiting with us. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 9. <clears throat> if you have it, it says, do your best. To come to me soon. Paul is talking. Demas has fell in love with this present world and has deserted me. Reading from the Good News Translation. Going off to Thessalonica. Cretans went to Galatia and Titus went to Dalmatia. Only Luke is here with me now. Get Mark and bring him with you because he can help me in the work. 
I want to speak to you all briefly from the topic this morning. Bring me Mark. Bring me Mark. The past several weeks, uh, several weeks ago, Brother Jerry started, look, uh, started unpacking a thought um, discussing how to have conflict resolution in the body of Christ. We started talking about the importance of relationships and how we're supposed to work together as people of God. Because we understand that as people of God, sometimes we're not going to get along. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're not going to agree on every single little thing. Amen. Sometimes we're going to have differences of opinion. And let's just be honest, sometimes y'all going to get on my nerves. Okay. Um, and as people of God, it's important that we understand and know how to resolve conflict. Amen. For many of us, we've never learned how to resolve conflict in our lives. For many of us, when somebody makes us upset or we get into it with somebody, we do one or two things. We either fight or flight. <clears throat> we either get into it and we, we, we duke it out, or we just leave the situation and we never deal with it. But we're never really taught how to truly, effectively um, resolve conflict. You cannot live life just getting mad at people and leaving them. Eventually, you're going to have to deal with the issues that are at hand. That's why so many of our households have so many struggles because we don't know how to resolve conflict. That's why so many marriages fall apart because people don't know how to resolve conflict. That's why kids are getting in fights in school because they don't know how to resolve conflict. That's why there's people going around there shooting people and killing people because they don't know how to resolve conflict. And so I want to make sure that Midwest, we understand how to resolve conflict and how to get to the root of issues in order for us to be the bright and shining light that God has called us to be. In Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about how we have to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. I like that he uses the word endeavor. He means that you got to work at it. Peace ain't going to come easy. Come on, rewind, rewind. Can I say that again? Rewind. Peace ain't going to come easy. You're not just going to automatically like each other. Sometimes you're going to have to work at it. Relationships are difficult. And it makes it really hard because Christianity is a relation, relationship-driven uh, movement. If you don't have relationships, you don't have Christianity. The foundation of Christianity is the relationship between us and God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. Um, he said, God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, he allowed Christ to die. For us, the foundation of this whole thing, the foundation of Christianity and religion is relationship between God and man. That's why the first commandment is to love your, your Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. But then we skip over the next part. The second is like unto it is to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, sometimes your neighbor is not lovable. Sometimes your neighbor does not say the right thing. Am I in the house? Y'all better say something because y'all starting to make me nervous. But sometimes your neighbor don't say the right thing or do the right thing. And if we be honest, sometimes our spouses don't say the right thing or do the right thing. Sometimes our friends don't say the right thing or do the right thing. Sometimes our boyfriend and girlfriend. But we got to learn how to resolve conflict and not allow conflict to mess us up. Last week, I, I, I showed you all um, Samson. And how Samson had a, had a, had a, um, he ended up in volatile relationships quite frequently because yeah. his attitude was unchecked. Anytime he got upset, he'd just start tearing stuff up. And so he never resolved conflict, but because of that, he started making things worse. So every time he destroyed something, there would be something else. And there was a lot of retaliation and a lot of back and forth. There are too many of us that live life retaliating. Rewind, rewind, rewind. There are too many of us that live life retaliating. We never learn how to let things go. We never learn how to forgive. And so some of us, if you be really honest, some of us are stagnant in our lives as adults because we still haven't forgiven somebody for what they did when we were a teenager. Amen. And they ain't thinking nothing else about you, but you still carrying that weight on you. But the Bible says, I believe in Hebrews, that you got to take off every weight, everything that weighs you down so you can run this race. And there's too many of us that got weight on us. There's a lot of us that are worried about sin but not about weight. Can I say that again? There's a lot of us that are worried about sin but not about weight. Yes, you got to make sure that your sin is in check. You got to make sure that you're not living after sin. But you also got to take off the things that weigh you down. You got to learn how to let some stuff go and forgive and to forget and to move on. And you have to learn how to effectively resolve conflict. Now, what does that have to do with my text this morning? Here in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see Paul. Paul is in a position to where I believe um, he's going through some things in his life. I believe he's in prison at this point. Um, and here he is going through all of this. He's, 
He's uh, uh, in prison because he's been teaching the gospel of Christ. And he's doing going through all of these things because he was following God. And now he's in a situation where he's hurting. Now he's in a situation where he feels like he's by himself. Now he's in a situation to where he feels like there's nobody else there for him. Now he's in a situation to where he's calling out to God. And he's saying, God, I need help. But sometimes when you're calling out to God spiritually, you need some practical help from your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And so what he's doing, he's telling, uh, uh, he's telling, going back to uh, what I started with, he's talking to Timothy at the beginning of this thing. He's talking to Timothy in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And he says, I need you to come and see about me as soon as you can. I need you to come check on me, make sure I'm doing all right. Demas was working with me, and he was helping me out, but he fell in love with this present world, and he's deserted me. Wow. I'm in this thing by myself now. The ones that I thought were going to be there, I thought Christians was going to be there, but he left and he went to Galatia. I thought Titus was going to be there, but he had to go, and he had to go to Dalmatia. And so now the only person that's with me right now is Luke, and I love Luke, but he's not enough. I need you to go get Mark. And bring him here to me. And there's some of us in there in our life right now who have a bring me Mark moment. You're in a situation where you feel like you're in this thing by yourself. And you go to your family. You go to your friends. You go to your mama and your daddy, but they can't help you. You go to your siblings, but they can't help you. You go to your friends, and they can't help you. And you're calling out to God, and you're saying, God, I need you to send me a Mark. I need you to bring somebody here to me that can support me, that can hold me up, that can give me some strength. I don't know what, if I'm going to make it. I need somebody to dry my eyes. I need somebody to bring me supplies. I need somebody to help me because I'm about to lose my mind right about now. Bring me Mark. I don't know who Mark is for you in your life. Mark may be a friend. Mark may be a counselor. Mark may be a therapist. Mark may be a minister. Mark may be a, a, a member of your family. But every now and then you need a Mark. We need God in our life. We need God to rule and lead and depend on. The Bible says you need to make sure that you trust God and you need to lean not on your own understanding and you need to make sure that you have a relationship with God. But sometimes that we forget that we are the body of Christ and members in particular. What does that mean? That means if Christ is our head, we are the body. And so when we think, when we call on God sometimes, he'll send us a hand instead of the head. But understand that the head is connected to, I mean, the hand is connected to the body. So you say, God, I need help. But he sends you a brother Curry. Alright. Hey. Y'all God, I need help, and he sends you a sister Arnetta. Are y'all hearing this thing? God, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. He sends you a sister Rose. But whenever you call out to God and you say, God, I need help, you gotta make sure that you don't you don't try to reject the one that God sends. I'm not even in my lesson good yet, but there's a story. There's a story of a man who was out there drowning. He was out there drowning. He had fallen out of a boat and he was drowning and somebody came by in a boat and they saw him drowning. And he said, help, help. He said, I'll save you. I mean, I want to help you. He said, well, God is going to help me. You can keep on going. He said, oh, no, no. He said, come on, let me help you. He said, no, God's going to help me. So the guy in the boat drives off and another guy in the boat comes by and the guy's like, do you need some help? He says, no, no. God is going to save me. So this guy drives off and another boat comes by and the same thing happens. He says, no, God is going to save me. And then the man dies. And the man, gets, uh, he gets up to the pearly gates and he asks God, God, why didn't you save me? He said, I sent you three boats. <laughs> but you ignored them. And there's a lot of us where God has been sending us some saving grace. He's been sending us some help for our hopeless situations, but we had an attitude with them or we held a grudge against them or we didn't want to listen to what they had to say because we felt like they were too damaged, like they had too many issues, like they did not understand. And we said, we don't want your help. We want God's help. But God is saying, they're the one that I'm sending to you. You need this mark in your life. And so... Here in our text, Paul, he's asking to see Mark. But remember, I told you, I'm talking about conflict resolution this morning. What I want you to see is and understand that Paul is asking for Mark. But Paul and Mark did not have the best relationship. Paul and Mark, they had their ups and downs. Paul and Mark, they, 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 they didn't always see eye to eye. and They didn't always get along. So I want to go to the book of Acts. Y'all go to the book of Acts chapter 13 and we're going to look at some stuff. And I'll be where you want me to be, and the lesson will be yours. Acts chapter 13. 
And I want to start reading by verse at, around verse number 4. Acts chapter four, 13, verse number 4. If you have it, it says, Having been sent by the Holy Spirit, Barnabas and Saul went to Seleucia. I guess that's how you say it. I'm from Alabama. Y'all bear with me. And sailed from there to the island of Cyprus. So, first thing I need you to understand, the Holy Spirit was working in the life of Paul and Barnabas, number one. I want to make sure that we get that. People of God and people that are here that may not know God the way they need to know God. I need you to understand. You cannot get where you're trying to go if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead. I'll say that again. You can't get where you're trying to go until you allow the Holy Spirit to lead. You cannot become what you want, what you want to be until you let the Holy Spirit to lead. You will not reach your full potential until you allow the Holy Spirit to lead. You're trying to understand why you're still in the same place. You're trying hard. You're filling out the applications. You're going to work and you're doing this. is because the Holy Spirit isn't the one leading you. You're allowing your intelligence to lead you. You're allowing what you feel like doing to lead you. But you got to get to the place to where the Holy Spirit leads you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and in in verse number 38 that Peter said unto them, you got to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the what? The Holy Spirit. If you can make sure that you repent. Repent means to change from your ways. It don't mean just stop doing bad. It means start to do right. There's some of us that are good at stopping to do bad stuff. But we're not good at starting to do good stuff. So we may stop cussing somebody out. But we never learn how to bless anybody else. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You, gotta, you, may, you, may, you may get into a position... To where you stop drinking, but you never start working and utilizing the sober mind that you now have. You got to get to a position where you're not just stopping to do wrong, but you're starting to do right. He says if you can repent and be baptized, baptism is still essential, guys. Can I say that again? A lot of folks don't like this kind of preaching. It's old school preaching. I feel like my granddaddy this morning. Baptism is still essential. And you got to make sure if you want the benefits of the Holy Ghost, you got to make sure that you meet them in the water. Because if you repent and you be baptized, who is he talking to? Every one of you. Every one. <laughs> Every one of you. In the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin, then you get the Holy Spirit. And so now the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. You ain't got to go trying to find it. You ain't got to uh, get somebody to lay hands on you. And when you get in that water, it gets inside of you. And now you're in a position to where you can start allowing it to lead and guide your life. What is that? Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8. It talks very much about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit, it makes intercession for us when we talk to God because we don't always ask for the right thing. And so the Holy Spirit makes intercession so we can make sure that we are in line with God's will. Because when we're starting trying to operate outside of God's will, we can never become what God wants us to be. Amen. So you got to make sure that you follow the Spirit. But anyway, that's not my lesson. Verse number five. When Paul and Barnabas, or right here it says Saul, Saul and Paul are the same person. Saul was his past life. Paul is his new life. Well, that's some preaching right there because some of us got a past life and some of us got a new life. Somebody used to be called adulterer, but now we're called saved. Somebody used to be called a liar, but now we're called saved. Some of us used to be called whoremonger, but now we're called saved. And so you, some of us got an old name, but now we got a new name. That's preaching in and of itself. But verse number five, when, when, when Paul and Barnabas... When they arrived at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue. So Paul and Barnabas are going about and they're preaching and they're teaching and they're saving souls. And it's interesting that they go into the synagogue because the synagogues are the people, are the Jewish people who did not necessarily believe that Jesus was the Christ. They believed in God and they believed that God created the heavens and earth, but they did not believe that, that Jesus was sent by God to save the world. And so the first place that they went when they get to these places, they go to the synagogue because they want to start making sure that the religious people have a good understanding of God's plan. And I want to make sure that y'all religious people that are in this room this morning, that you have a good understanding of God's plan. Preach it. Preach it. It's a messed up situation. When you come in here every week, but you don't know God for real. You sit in the services, you listen to the songs, you listen to the sermons, but you don't have a clue who God is. Some of y'all have been in the church your whole life, born and raised. You know nothing else but the church, but you still don't know God. I think I said something. 
I said, there's a lot of y'all that know church very well, but you ain't know God. At some point, you got to know God. It's not enough just to know the church. It's good to know the church. It's good to know uh, uh, Midwest uh, 2115 Garland Avenue. But when you going to really know God? Am I in the house this morning? Yeah. It's like this. Knowing, knowing the church and not knowing God is like knowing Lydia but not knowing me. You know the wife, but you don't know the husband. But you think that you're going to find favor with the husband because you know the wife. I'm preaching this morning. I don't care what you You got to get to a place. If you really want favor with the husband, you got to know the husband. And God is saying, y'all been coming here, and y'all been getting really close and really nice with my wife, but y'all still don't know me. And as a matter of fact, I don't know about, uh, about anybody else, but if somebody got to know my wife very well but didn't want to know me, You want to know my wife, but you don't want to know me. We got a problem. And some of y'all think y'all going to get into heaven knowing the wife, but you still don't have a relationship with the father. At some point, y'all. So anyway, so they, they're going around and they're teaching people. But this is the point I was actually trying to get to. It says, when, when Paul and Barnabas were going about, they had John Mark with them to help them with the work. So Mark, that Mark that we're talking about, when the relationship with him and Paul started, it was a good relationship. They were going around and being evangelistic and teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And some of y'all, y'all have some good relationships with some people. They started off very well and things were going good and they were going about and they were teaching folk and everything was going good. But when you drop down to verse number 13, the Bible says, Paul and his companions sailed from Paphos and came to Persia, a city in Pamphylia. And John Mark left them and went back to Jerusalem. <laughs> they were going about changing the world, saving souls, changing lives, baptizing folks. They had a really good time. They were doing really good. And then all of a sudden, John Mark left. The Bible doesn't say why he left, but in a minute you're going to see, what, for whatever reason he left, it did not sit well with Paul. I don't know if he left because he got homesick and he's like, I need to get back to my, my family. If you know, um, if you uh, back in Acts chapter 11, if I'm not mistaken, we know that John Mark has a pretty good relationship with his, with his mother. And he, he has a mother who has a house that was really involved in, the, in discipleship and things. Peter, when he got out of prison, he went and ran to John Mark's mama house. That's just some biblical stuff, but I need y'all to understand. Maybe he wanted to go back and hang out with his mama. Maybe he said, I've gotten too far away. Maybe he had a wife and kids and he said, I need to get back. Maybe he had been gone too long. When you look at this text, the Bible says that they, that they started out in, in Antioch, then they went to Seleucia, and then they went to Cyprus, and then they went to Salamis, and now they're in Paphos, and then from Paphos they go to Persia, and then from Persia they go to Pamphylia. Maybe John Mark said, I'm tired of being on the road. <laughs> we don't know why he left. All we know is that he left and he des deserted Paul and Barnabas. And some of you all in y'all's life, my God, my God, you were in some good relationships with some people that you thought loved you, some people that you thought were always going to be there for you, some people that you thought that you could depend on, but all of a sudden, when the time got tough, they deserted you. Mm. All of a sudden, they were nowhere to be found. You thought that they were in your corner, but when you turn back there, they were no longer there. There's some people who have gone through some things where they once thought that they were loved and they thought that they had a good and solid and a strong relationship, but when you needed them, they left you. They may not have physically left you, but they may have left you mentally and emotionally. You had to deal with that pain of loss all by yourself. You had to deal with that pain and that torment and that worry and that anxiety all by yourself because the person that you thought that you could lean on said, no, I don't want you to lean on me. I got enough problems of my own. I'm going to go away. You got to deal with it alone. Anybody ever been there? Well, you felt by yourself. You may have felt deserted by a spouse. You and y'all were going through a hard time in your home. And some things were going on where they had suffered loss. You, you might have lost 
a, a, a mother or a father or you may have had a miscarriage and you lost a baby and you felt like I need to depend on my husband right now but your husband said I don't want to deal with this and they left you deserted they may, they may not have left the house but they left you to fend for yourself emotionally. And at this point, you have all this resentment and all this pain. And you can't even look at them the same way. And the Bible says that's about where Paul was at this point. Because when you get to Acts chapter 15, in Acts chapter 15, the Bible says that some time later, Paul and Barnabas, they said, let's go back and visit the believers in every town where we preach the word of the Lord. And let us find out how they're getting along. Barnabas said... Let's go and take John Mark with us. The Bible says in verse number 38 that Paul did not think it was the right decision to take John Mark because John Mark had, had not stayed with them to the end of their mission and had turned back when they were in Pamphylia. So basically, this is what it's saying. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them on another mission, and Paul said no because he deserted me last time. And there's some of you all who are in relationships, whether it be spouses or whether it be with your children or whether it be with folk at the church where um, and you're in a position where they want to be close to you again and they want to be uh, be there for you and they want you to lean on them and you say no last time I leaned on you you left me by myself last time I tried to depend on you I ended up hurting worse than I started with and I can't trust you no more it's too late now. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I see you trying to change, and I see you trying to get your life together, but I can't do it no more. I'm done with you. You need to go on somewhere because I just can't look at you the same. I don't love you no more. We done grew apart now, and now I can't deal with it. And, and stuff like this happens in the church. I said stuff like this happens in the church. Sometimes we lean and depend on some folk, but when the time came, we felt like they weren't there. Well, when my mama got sick, Brother Jerry didn't come to the hospital to pray with me, and I feel like he don't love me no more. Well, the thing is, there's a whole lot of folk in this congregation, and you ain't the only one here with problems. But a lot of us let that, what, let how that happens, skew our view of church people. Am I in the house? Well, when I was going through this, I, I told my mama about it, but she didn't want to believe me. And she's a church person. And so because she didn't believe me, I don't like church folk no more. I've heard it. Have you heard it? And it's, you let, allow those things to skew how you view the people of God. And you get so, you have such resentment and so much hatred. The church took my daddy away from me. They were just, he was so involved in church that he never was at any of my games and he never did anything for me in my life. And you have all this hatred and, and resentment towards church folk. Am I in the house? But the thing is, there are two people in this scenario because we forget. Paul wasn't the only person that got deserted. Barnabas got deserted too. Paul said, I don't want nothing to do with you. But Barnabas said, let's give him another chance. And you get to decide, are you going to be a Paul or are you going to be a Barnabas? You get to decide, are you going to say it's over with and I'm done with this thing and get out my face? Or are you going to be a Barnabas that said, let's give him another chance? I know they, they didn't measure up the first time, but I ain't going to stop loving them. I ain't going to stop uh, uh, look, looking to them and depending on them because I believe in them. I see something in them that you may not see and that you may not understand. I believe in Mark. You can give up on Mark, but I'm not going to give up on Mark. And there are too many of us that give up right before our breakthrough hit. I'll say that again. Sometimes we give up right before our breakthrough hit. We call it quits. And God is saying, if you can just go a little bit longer, your breakthrough is right around the corner. You just can't see it. And you give up right on the verge of a breakthrough, but you didn't see it. But you have Paul and Barnabas here, and Paul says, I don't want nothing to do with you. And Barnabas says, I just can't give up on you just yet. But verse number 39, the Bible says, there was such a sharp disagreement or argument that they separated. Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas took John Mark with them, and they sailed off towards Cyprus, where Paul and Silas left. I want you to see this. So when they could not agree, they said, we can't do this anymore. Barnabas took Mark, because he said, I'm not going to give up on Mark, and they go one way. 
And Paul, he takes Silas and they go another way. But I want you to see this. A lot of times we look at this and we feel as if they gave up on each other. No, they didn't give up on each other because the next part says that the believers, some verses, uh, some verses say the elders, commended to the, them to the grace of the Lord. This is what I need you to understand. They didn't give up on each other, but they understood if we keep fighting against each other, we'll never be able to make any kind of progress. So let's, let me take Mark and you take Silas and let's go in different directions because watch this. It's not about what we want. It's about what the kingdom needs. Because they understood that, th that this disagreement was going to mess up kingdom work. If you're so determined, watch this. If you're too focused on what Midwest is doing, that you miss out on what the kingdom is doing, you'll mess it up. As far as church folk go, you'll sit around and you'll try to make somebody stay at Midwest because you want Midwest members to stay here. You want Midwest attendance to stay up and you'll try to force somebody to stay at Midwest that don't work at Midwest. I knew that was about to be quiet. I know one can get no amens on that. They may be better suited at Newburgh. Watch this, but it's not about Midwest. It's about the kingdom. And if you get so caught up in trying to make Midwest great that you never try to make the kingdom great, you'll try to force a square hole in a round peg, and God is saying, let them go over to West Broadway and fly. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because watch this. What you don't realize is if you let some people go, what will happen is you'll connect the two congregations together, and now y'all more powerful than y'all ever realized. I remember when, when, when I got ready to leave my home congregation. I, I grew up at the Southside Church of Christ in Rogersville, Alabama. And I was getting ready to leave. I, I got a, 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 a call, the call to preach for a congregation about 25 minutes down the road. And I remember when I told, told uh, the leadership that I was getting ready to go, they said, oh, no, don't leave. <laughs> we don't want you to go. Like, you're doing a great work here, and we appreciate it. We don't want you to go anywhere. We don't want you to leave us. But we, what all of us had to understand is that I wasn't leaving anybody. I was just going to another part of the kingdom. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And watch this. I didn't, we didn't separate. I just modified how I worked with them. So I wasn't there to teach Bible class on Sunday and Wednesday, but I still sang in the chorus. Anytime they needed me to come back and preach, I came back and preached. I, took, I still took their youth with me when I went on youth trips. I did, not, I did not leave them. I modified how we worked together. And what Paul and Barnabas had to do, they didn't just separate from each other. I know on the outside, it looked like they separated from each other. But all they did, they modified how they worked together. But they never stopped working together. And people of God, as we're trying to learn how to resolve conflict, sometimes... We, we want to separate and we want to we want to make sure that we're separate from somebody else. But sometimes it's not separation you need. Sometimes you got to modify how you work together. That's in our relation. That's how that's that that works in our households too. A lot of us when we when us our spouses we get into it we want to get a separation. And we have, the Bible don't say anything bad about separation. Why can't we separate? When the Bible talks about separation, I believe in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he says you can separate, but you got to separate with the mindset of reconciliation. So it's not that you're trying to get away from somebody, but you're trying to figure out how I can work it out with somebody. The problem is with a lot of us, when we separate, we become new people that don't want anything to do with the old person. I'm in the house tonight. If you want more on this stuff, we, we've been talking about this in my Tuesday night Bible study on relationships. Y'all go back and watch that because we've been talking about a lot of these things. But we got to make sure that sometimes we modify. Sometimes but when you realize that what you're doing is hurting somebody, you have to modify how you work with them. Come on, man. All right. If you really love them, if you really want that relationship, you got to modify how you work with them. When, when me and my wife got married, I realized there's some things that she can't stand. And I learned that real quick. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I had to modify how I worked with my wife. When it was up to me, all my clothes would be in a chair. <laughs> They'd be clean, though, but I sit them all in one chair and I pull out what I need. That drives my wife crazy. <laughs> and so I had to modify how I work with her. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to modify how you work with other people. And so what happens is Paul and Barnabas, they split up 
and Paul goes with Silas, and y'all know what happens with Paul and Silas. They do all kinds of stuff. Y'all remember when they, the, the jailhouse rock, when they were in prison and they started praying and there was an earthquake in the jail. Like Paul and Silas had a great ministry. Barnabas and Mark had a great ministry, and the kingdom was glorified. But when you get to, to uh, and they, verse 41, they went on strengthening the churches. But when you get to Colossians chapter 4, and I'm trying to get out of this thing. I'm, I'm, y'all got a little bit of time? Five, five or so, five or ten minutes? In Colossians chapter 4, though, remember, the last time we saw Paul and Mark, Paul didn't want anything to do with Mark. Paul said, Mark, I'm done with you. You hurt me too bad before. You deserted me before, and now I can't trust you. But look at Colossians chapter 4. Paul is now in prison, okay? Paul is now in prison. The Bible says in verse number 10, Aristarchus, who is in prison with me, sends your greetings, and so does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Did y'all see that? Why did Barnabas not want to give up on Mark? Because Barnabas and Mark were cousins. They had a deeper relationship with each other than, uh, than Paul and Mark did. And watch this. A reason why so many of us are so quick to give up on relationships, because we didn't work hard enough to build the right relationship from the get-go. It's easy to let go of something that you don't really believe in anyway. And so as people of God, if we're gonna if we're gonna reconcile, you gotta first, before you even get to a problem, make sure that you build you a strong relationship from the jump. These ain't just folk that you go to church with, these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. This is your family. I know we say stuff like Brother Joe and Brother Curry, but y'all realize that brother and sister ain't those aren't titles in the Bible. Y'all do when you read the Bible, you never see Brother Paul, you see my brother Paul. So it's not a title, it's a relationship. So it's not Brother Joe, it's my Brother Joe. Ooh. Are y'all seeing this thing? It's not Brother Jerry, it's my Brother Jerry. Because we have relationship. And we got to stop, ooh, there's too many of us that treat brother and sister like titles and not like relationship. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's my sister Anna. Don't you say nothing about my sister Anna. Because that's my sister. You don't come after my sister because we got relationship. You know why we brother and sister? Because we got the same daddy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying this morning? So I want us to make sure that when we're, when we're talking to each other, I'm, and I'm from the South, so I'm all about giving respect. I'm going to call you brother and sister anyway just because I'm from the South. But we got to make sure that it's deeper than that. It's my sister Tyler. Amen. My sister Tyra make me liver and onions, and it tastes so, so good because that's my sister Tyra. Are y'all hearing this thing? It got to go beyond just folk that you go to church with. Because when you just go to church with folk, it's easy for you to give up on these folk. When's the last time you, when's the last time you fought for somebody on your job? You don't care about nobody you work with. They just folk that work in the same building. If, some, if they get cut, you're like, more money for me. <laughs> I can give me some more hours now that they gone. <laughs> but church folk got to be more than just folk that you assemble with. They got to be your spiritual siblings. Which means that you're going to have ups and downs sometimes. You ain't always going to agree all the time. Sometimes, think about when you were little and the things that you did with your brothers and sisters. There's some stories that you and your brothers and sisters have that nobody else will ever understand. Because y'all are siblings. Okay. Are y'all hearing this thing? And we've got to get to a place to where, like Mark, Mark Barnabas said, I cannot give up on Mark because we're family. Paul, I know y'all ain't related, and I know y'all don't have the relationship that we have, but I can't, I can't let him go. If I let him go, his mama, my Aunt Mabel going to get me. I can't do it. <laughs> Are y'all hearing this thing? And so, but this, I guess the, the last part of this verse, he says, Paul says, you have already received instructions to welcome Mark if he comes your way. I want you to see this. Paul is telling the church at Colossae, if Mark, when Mark gets out of prison, you need to welcome him. The last time we saw Paul and Mark dealing with each other, Paul didn't want nothing to do with Mark. But now Paul is saying, when Mark comes your way, you need to welcome him with open arms. In the book of Philemon, the Bible, uh, Paul even calls him a co-worker in the gospel. What changed? I thought you didn't like uh, Mark, uh, Paul. I thought y'all didn't get along. Why are you sitting here and commending him and telling everybody else that they need to trust him and depend on him even though you didn't? Is, do you know what happened? They both ended up in prison. All right. See. And watch this. When you stuck in prison together, 
you have to work out some stuff. See, as long as they were separated, nothing ever got healed. But once they ended up in solitary confinement with each other, All right. are y'all hearing this thing? Yeah. What happens when both of you are at rock bottom and you have to deal with each other? We're so quick to try to separate, but what if we, God is telling you need to get closer? All right. Oh, am I helping somebody this morning? Y'all yeah. don't like this because it's easy for us to cut folk off. We're in the cut folk off period and season of, of life anyway. We'll cancel folk for anything right now. Somebody say the wrong thing. We cancel culture. That's what we do. And we say stuff like, I'm working on my, my mental stability, so I'm going to cut folk out in my life. That, that don't mean me no good. I'm just cutting folk off. And you see it all folks, all over folks' timelines and social media. I'm cutting you off. I'm blocking you. Block you. Blocking is what I do. <laughs> and we're trying to do all that we can to cut folk off. But why did, what if God... It's funny how when you're trying to run away from somebody, God will force y'all to be in the same situation where y'all have to deal with each other. Stop running away and start running too. Stop cutting off and start mending. If you want to reconcile some stuff, stop running away. You need to work, figure out how y'all can get in the same place to where y'all can deal with each other. Are y'all hearing me, Midwest? Because some folk are going to make you mad. Some folk are going to get on your nerves. I'm going to get on your nerves. And you're going to be so quick to be done with me. I don't even know why y'all brought him in here. Y'all brought him and y'all hired him. I wish Brother Jerry would come back. I'm tired of hearing him preach anyway. But watch this. Come and talk to me. You know the Bible says when, when somebody has a problem with you or you had a problem with your brother, you need to go to your brother alone and talk to him. That's what the Bible says. And then it says, and if they won't listen, get you two or three more, and y'all talk to them again. And then it says, if they won't listen, take it to the uh, church and, and talk to them. There's uh, several steps of talking before a separation. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But we go straight to separation. We go straight to mark them that cause division among you. We skip right to that, which that's a part of it, but there's several steps you got to take before you get to that. You got to have some conversation. That's the problem with church folks. We don't like to talk. We like to talk about God, but we don't want to talk God. Because if we talk God, that means we got to talk forgiveness. And we got to talk love our enemy. And we got to talk turn the other cheek and love our neighbor as a... We don't want to talk that stuff. Oh. I don't know if I can say this. I don't know if I can say this. But there's a generation of preachers out there that rather than discuss how to reconcile, we only talk the church how to mark. Oh, it's real quiet in here. We didn't teach our churches how to work out differences. We taught our church how to disfellowship people. And I'm not saying withdrawal and disfellowship ain't a part of it. But it should, there should be several steps and it should take a while before you get to that point. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Y'all better say amen quick. I'll park here and preach a while. Because it's easy to, to withdraw from somebody. Because if we withdraw from them, they, we ain't, they ain't our problem no more. We just say, oh, well, such and such is doing that, but they ain't a part of Midwest no more. The Bible says, watch this, and I'm going to move on. The Bible says when, 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 when that happens and you have to withdraw your fellowship from somebody, the Bible says don't treat them as an enemy. Treat them as your brother. We don't ever read that part. We don't read that part with courage. There's too many of us that we treat them as an enemy and not as a brother. I don't care what you did. Yes, we may have to adjust how we work together, but you're still my sister or my brother. And so we got to work. And so by this point, you see that they work out their differences. And I'm back where I started in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Because they both got to a position to where they both had to look up and they both had to depend on God and they had to really deal with each other. Now you see Paul in a broken situation. He says, everybody else has left me. <laughs> everybody else deserted me. All I got right now is Luke, and I need you to bring me Mark. I know that we had our differences in the past. I know that he did not do right in the past. I know that he deserted me before, but I, there's something about him now to where I trust him with my whole heart. Did you not know that God can, uh, can turn somebody that used to be your enemy, and he can turn them into your friend? Amen. Amen. 
Somebody that you once couldn't depend on is going to be the only person that you can depend on at the end of the day. God is the only person that can do that thing. But you have to allow God to work in your life and you have to allow God to work on your relationships. You got to be you got to stop being so quick to cut people off and you got to be a whole lot quicker to start resolving conflict. So you can say, bring me Mark. Everybody say, bring me Mark. Bring me Mark. And I don't know who Mark is in your life. I want you to sit here and think about it for a second. Think about who's that Mark in your life that God has been trying to send your way, that God has been trying to get you to work things out with, that God has been trying to get you to mend things with, that you've given up on, that you said it's too late, that you've stopped trusting the person that hurt you. That's your Mark. That person that you think they can't be dependent on, that may just be your Mark. Let God work in y'all's lives and see where he takes you. If you've listened to the sermon this morning, God is calling you. What you going to do? Are you going to keep doing what you've always done? Are you going to keep on giving up? Are you going to keep on saying it's too late? Are you going to keep on staying in the same position? Or are you going to start trying to work on the relationships in your life? Are you going to be able to work it out with your spouse or with your uh, significant other, with your girlfriend or your boyfriend? Are you going to work it out with your children? Are you going to work it out with your leadership? Are you going to work it out with the members here at Midwest? Are you going to keep on hiding? Are you going to stop showing up? Y'all know, y'all ever notice folk that can come to church, but all of a sudden they start going MIA, and you say to yourself, I haven't seen them in three or four weeks. It may be something happened, but we didn't think enough, enough about them to go check on them. The Bible says, I believe in Matthew, it's either 5 or 15, the Bible says that when you realize that somebody has a problem with you, you need to th leave, your, uh, leave your sacrifice at the altar and go fix it with them before you give anything else to God. Oh, I hope I'm helping us this morning, church, because I want us to be one. Jesus said, I pray to God that my people will be one, just like me and you are one. There's too many of us that preach one Lord, one faith, one baptism, but we don't know nothing about really having good relationships with people. One law, one faith, one baptism is easy when everybody agrees with what you're saying. But what about when you have a difference of opinion? We have to get to a position where we can work things out and we can say, bring me John Mark. If you're here and you're not a member of the church, you ought to be. If you've not been baptized for the remission of your sin, you ought to do that this morning. I told you at the beginning of this lesson, that's how you get the Holy Spirit. It don't come with laying of hands. It doesn't come with saying a prayer. It does not come with uh, just a, a random thing where it comes upon you and you start speaking in tongues. That's not how you get the Holy Ghost. You get the Holy Ghost through baptism. And once you get the Holy Spirit, God can start navigating your life and he can start moving and, and maneuvering you around things that you may not even see. But all you got to do is get in that word and study the word and get that word in your heart. The Bible says the word I have hid in my heart. If you're here this morning and you need to repent and you need to confess your faults, we'll pray for you. The Bible says confess your faults one to another and pray for each other that you may be healed. We're working together so we can truly be the vessel that God has called us to be as the body of Christ. If you stand subject to the invitation, please come as we stand and sing this song together. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling for you and for me. I see on the portal, he's waiting and watching. I'm watching for you and for me. Hey, come home, come home, come home. In your home, I come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. Oh, sinner, come home. Come home, come home. In your home, I come home. Bless you. Calling, I right there. calling, oh, oh, oh sinner, come on. Come on. I'll let the church say amen. amen. God is calling. What are we waiting on? We got a young lady here come forth, and Brother Pooh will talk with her and see what she'd like the church to do for her. Sister Knight is standing. Go ahead, huh?
Amen. Thank you. And we have Sister Angelica uh, in the back, please. Facebook Live. Oh, Brother Jerry, okay. What that's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Now don't they report the news like if things like this happen? I haven't heard anything. Well, Brother Jerry, praise, praise the Lord. Uh, Sister Linda Brano says, please pray for my next door neighbor who has cancer. Uh, we have Sister Amanda Smith says, prayers for my mother's friend, Rosie. Pray for my granddaughter's grandmother in Georgia, praying for the bereaved. And we also have Shakita Curry says, pray for our students, especially college students that are back at school, pray that they follow the guidelines to keep themselves and others safe from the COVID-19. And we also have Victoria Fowler says, asking prayers for myself and for my Christian walk and strength for my family and self. And also Sister Rita Greer says, please pray for Eula Campbell and Bernice Herbert, my two aunts, who are seniors and who are working through senior issues of health. Uh, also, uh, Sister Beverly Bledsoe says, please pray for my niece, my great nephew in Alabama that has been exposed to COVID virus. Congratulations to brother and sister Fraser who will be selling 65 years of marriage on this coming Friday. Amen. Uh, also, um, we want to pray for Sister Jackie Hallman. Uh, she's home from the nursing home, uh, but she needs the prayers of the church because she's not able to maintain the health issues that she's going through. She needs the hospital bed, which hopefully be the, uh, delivered this week. And uh, we also have a prayer request from Cheryl, Cheryl Barber, prayers from uh, Don family and lost and simply of a loved one. And we have uh, also, Sister Anna Sharp, please pray for Anthony Brown and Floyd Baker. And we have uh, uh, Anthony Brown is visiting with us today. Uh, he had to leave, okay? And Sister Dorothy Nice, she has already expressed her prayers and thanks for the church, what they done on yesterday. And we have uh, Mary Barlow, uh, and she is visiting with us today, and that's her. And Brother Poo, did you have an announcement for us? Yeah, she said that she would like to ask for prayer, and she'd also like to be baptized on this morning. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. All right. And, um, and we have uh, a name here that says John. Uh, she's the, he's the guest of Israel. Israel, is he still here? All right, glad to have you today, my brother. God bless you. Uh, brother Poo, you want to take her confession? You did an outstanding job today, brother. The angels in heaven are rejoicing on this morning. Yeah. 
this one precious soul that wants to come and give her life to God. We're thankful for her. Uh, we want you to know that this isn't going to be something that's just as easy. Just keep giving your life to God is going to make everything easy, but it's going to make it possible. <laughs> and because you're working with God, all things are possible to you that believe. We're going to take your confession at this time. You can sit right here. We want to ask, what was your name again? Mary Barlow. Mary Barlow. We're going to ask you, just like they asked back in the Bible days, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And if you believe that, just say it with your mouth. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. That confession brought death to many, but it's going to bring life to you. Um, we're going to have the sisters are going to take her back and get her ready, and I believe Brother Jerry and, and, and God are going to baptize her and help them with that. But can we have a word of prayer for all those that ask prayer? Let us go to God of prayer at this time. Father God, we love you, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to call you Father, dear God. We thank you so much for your word this morning and how you brought it forth to God. We thank you for allowing me to be the vessel, but we know that it's your word that has penetrated the hearts, dear God. Lord, we ask prayer for all those that ask prayer this morning, those that are battling sickness, we ask that you heal. Those that are battling mental things, I pray that you work with them and relieve their anxiety and their worry. Those that need healing in relationships and in families, we pray that you be there for them, dear God. There's so much that, that, that is going on in this world. There's so much violence and so much hatred and so much, but we know that you heal. If your people who are called by your name shall humble themselves, seek your face, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then you will heal from heaven and you will heal the land, dear God. So we ask that you just move on like only you can move, dear God. But we pray that we allow you to utilize us as vessels of change in our communities and in this world. We thank you so much for Miss Mary this morning who has said she wants to give her life to you, dear God. Yeah. We thank you for her for her courage, dear God, to come forward. We pray that you just continue to work on her heart, and we pray that as members of the body of Christ that we can treat her like our sister, yeah. and we can move forward, dear God. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 For the courage and the service and those that will help her, you can go forward at this time. Again, we want to thank Brother Malone for the message this morning, and, uh, and the brother is still growing and still praise the Lord, bless him for that. Uh, stand before you to give you an opportunity to give back a portion of your earning as God has blessed us. Uh, we, uh, we are so thankful to those that are supporting the work that goes on here through the Midwest Church of Christ, through our food pantry, through our food giveaway, through our clothing, all the things that we are doing here. Uh, we thank you for that. And there are many are given through cash out. And then, and like I said this morning at our 30, 830 worship service, our website is back up, so you could also donate from your website. But we want to thank those that are actually bringing that contribution by. The audience looks good this morning. So happy to see all the faithful souls that are out. God is going to bless us, and God is going to be with us. So at this time, we're going to have prayer, and then we'll come around for those that have not already turned there contribution in we will pick up that contribution let's pray dear God of heaven thank you so much for your blessings thank you father for our jobs thank you father for means of uh, gaining uh, collecting money that we'll be able to support the work on here at the Midwest Church not only financial father but we thank all of those that are actually uh, helping and cleaning up and doing things for the, for the building and for the church father we ask that you continue to bless them Continue to give them a long life, Father, that they will be able to continue to doing these things. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. While they're taking up the collection, I just want to thank all those that tuned in last night um, for the Joshua Conference. Um, activities there on Facebook Live via the Great Road Church of Christ. Dr. Jeremy Fountain is the minister there. And last night, every night this week till Wednesday, they'll have different speakers and different singers. Last night I spoke, um, and I actually sang to that. I put my own self in the pulpit last night. But thank you for all those that watched and supported. 
Um, and there'll be more of that tonight. There'll be three more speakers and some more singers. So just go, we'll share the links on the Midwest Facebook pages, um, the group and the public page. So please check that out um, this week. Also keep Brother Jerry in prayer. He's doing much, much better. Um, he just has to stay in a few more days, but he's doing much better than he was last week. Y'all's prayers have been working, and we thank you for him. We pray that he'll be able to just take it a little easy so he's able to still do what God has called him to do. Um, Wednesday, for those that have been participating on our Wednesday night Bible studies, we appreciate you all that have been giving comments and have been participating as we've been discussing um, church leadership. We pray that it's been a blessing to you and that you got some clarification on some things if you have some questions. And I appreciate those. There have been those that have been messaging me and just asking me different questions even afterwards. I really appreciate it because we want to make sure that you have a good understanding. Um, we'll continue that on this coming Wednesday with a question and answer session. For all those that have any more questions, we're going to answer those questions on Wednesday night. Um, please also, while we're talking about that, if you have any that you recommend for elders and deacons, please get us those names so that way we can take them into consideration. Um, Tuesday nights, we've been doing our um, young adult class on Tuesday nights, and we've been discussing relationships. I appreciate those. There have been some older people that have been getting on and giving us some wisdom. Um, anybody that's been in any kind of relationship, married, we've been talking about marriage and dating, um, get on, because um, we love your wisdom. I've only been married, we'll be married in five years and two weeks, but some of y'all have been married 35 years and 45 years, and it'll be really good for us to be able to hear from you all so we can get that wisdom and that knowledge. Um, so please tune in on Tuesday nights. This week it'll be at 6 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock this coming up Tuesday. I feel like there was something else that I needed to mention. Um, oh, pictorial directory. If you have not signed up for the pictorial directory, I believe we're taking those pictures September 8th, 9th, and 10th, if I'm not mistaken. Please contact Claudia McGill and get yourself registered and signed up if you can do that. Last I heard, there's, there's a lot more of us that need to sign up. Please do it. It's a free picture. We'd love for you to come um, and be a part of that experience as well. We still got time for the current Yes, please still sign up for your t-shirts. Their forms are out there in the lobby. I just announced it. <laughs> but please tune in for the Joshua Conference every night through Wednesday night. All right, that's all that I have. Anybody else have anything? All right, we'll sing a verse. No, no, no. They ain't great on the concert. Yeah, we want them to stay. Yeah, I'm going to sing a song. I know, well, let me. Uh, Again, you, you, you see our, our lawn, our community, our uh, grass out front. We are asking what we would like to do, rather than having a contractor come in and cut our grass, we want us to get together and be part of that. It don't have to be just men. We, women can also, and we want to get up a group and for so us to take care of our lawn and take care of and keep it beautified around here. We want to thank Brother Crenshaw, our new convert from last last week came by on his own and cut the yard so praise the lord so we want to we want to we want to thank him for that and we want others to come by and just start keeping the place beautiful the shrubberies all that this is our home this is the way we keep it so let's just pull together and work together and we'll put together a list of when we can come out to do that so we again we want to encourage you to be a part of that we have plenty of water. You eat as much water as you want to drink. <laughs> a little bit. It's in my veins. It's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord. It's in my veins. Oh, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my way. Sing just a little over there 
And while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my way down in my veins. It's in my veins. It's in my veins. Lord, it's in my veins. Oh, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my Father, in prayer. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all that you have done today. 
We come in the name of thy son Jesus, the one who suffered, bled, and died, rose again on the third day. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you brought this soul before your kingdom today, that she's been baptized for the remission of her sins. We'll ask you, O oh, now, to continue to bless Sister Barlow, but we know her battle is just now beginning. And we know that through you that you'll supply everything that she needs, the weapons of her warfare. And we know that it's your word that will find a lodging place in her heart, that we now, as Brother Poole lets us know, she's my sister that's in Jesus Christ. And we just ask you to, to be with her and the thing that she's going through, we're, we're there to assist her. All these we pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. amen. Let us all stand saying, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord arise among us. Let the glory of the Lord arise among us. Let the praises of the King Arise among us, let it rise and oh, 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 let it rise. I let the song of the Lord arise among us, let the song of the Lord arise among us, let the joy of the King. Arise among us, let it rise, and oh, 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 let it rise, and let the Spirit of the Lord arise among us, let the Spirit of the Lord arise among us, let the Spirit of the Lord Arise among us, let it rise, and oh, 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 let it rise. Close us out, brother. After this prayer, y'all just kind of stay around a little bit so we can greet our new sister. Let us pray. Father God, by the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all until we meet again. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.